South Africa is a multiclimactic and multilingual nation, where the three most widely spoken languages gravitate towards three drastically different climates. Afrikaans speakers dominate the drier climates of western South Africa, Zulu speakers the humid subtropical eastern side of the country, while Hossa speakers seem to prefer the oceanic southeast. Let's take a closer look. The story of South Africa's climate begins in the city where the story of South Africa as a modern nation began, Cape Town. This warm summer Mediterranean climate city is the capital of the Western Cape province, which is heavily populated by Afrikaans-speaking peoples. The warm Mediterranean climate of the city and surrounding region made it perfect for founding father Jan van Rijbeek to establish a way station to supply grapes, apples, citrus, and other essentials to ships traveling between Europe and India. Today this region's mild climate produces the grapes that are used to make some of the world's finest wines. The blue skies and large waves make for fine surfing, and boy, the surfer in this photo looks so sharp, he's bound to have a climate-oriented video channel in his future. Moving in any direction away from the fertile regions around Cape Town, the climate dries. And as we move up the west coast, it gradually dries to the cold desert climate of Alexander Bay. The mighty Orange River flows into the Atlantic Ocean at Alexander Bay, which is near the southern end of the Namib Desert. This is the driest town in South Africa, which virtually zero precipitation in the southern hemisphere summer and two days per month in winter. Off the coast and deep into the Afrikaans' northern Cape Heartland is the Kalahari Desert, this region of the country is well represented by the town of Uppington, which has very hot summers and only about 24 days per year with any precipitation, bringing it into the hot desert climate zone. This town experiences among the hottest summers in South Africa, so best to keep cool with a dip in the Orange River, which flows through town on the way to Alexander Bay. Just don't be surprised if a thirsty neighbor stops in for a drink. West, towards the middle of South Africa, is the Afrikaans' hot, semi-arid climate city of Kimberley, whose most famous former resident is Cecil Rhodes, founder of the Worldwide Rhodes Scholarships. Rhodes was sent to South Africa as a child because of the country's climate, which his parents hoped would improve his poor health. Precipitation peaks in the southern hemisphere summers in Kimberley with seven days per month, while the city's dry winters average only a day or two of rain per month. Leaving the Cape and into the Free State and its capital of Bloemfontein, the climate here is slightly wetter compared to Kimberley, and cooler enough to bring the city into the cold, semi-arid climate zone. Afrikaners seem to thrive in dry climates, so it's natural that Bloemfontein was once the capital of the Afrikaner Republic of the Orange Free State, and is situated in part of the Free State still dominated by the Afrikaans language. The present-day Afrikaner enclave of Oranya is about 200 miles away, and is slightly hotter when compared to Bloemfontein's fairly pleasant monthly averages. Leaving the dry western half of South Africa, we come to the linguistically diverse province of Gauteng, a subtropical region without a majority language, but where the Zulu language makes up the plurality. The national capital of Pretoria, has a humid subtropical dry winter climate with comfortable temperature averages each month, including moist summers with springs and autumns that trend into dry winters. Just an hour's drive south of Pretoria in Gauteng province is southern Africa's business center of Johannesburg. 
Another Zulu language plurality lives here, so of course it's a humid subtropical city of the highland variety. Johannesburg is two or three degrees cooler than Pretoria on average each month, despite their close proximity, and this can largely be attributed to its position a thousand feet up the Highveld Plateau from Pretoria. Like Pretoria, Joburg has dry winters punctuated with comparatively wet summers. This is a very similar climate in both temperature and precipitation to that of the Drakensberg Mountains, east of Gauteng Province, which runs all the way from the north end of the country near Mozambique to the south of the country along the border with Lesotho. Higher elevations of the Drakensberg Mountains enjoy regular snow in winter, and the range hosts one of the few ski resorts in Africa. Beyond the Drakensberg Mountains is KwaZulu-Natal province, land of the Zulu people. The province's largest city of Durban is situated on the warm waters of the Indian Ocean. It's a wonderful place to make new friends, both of the two-legged and finned varieties. This humid subtropical city has moderately hot summers and warm winters, with plenty of rain each month. It rains 10 to 12 days per month in summer, and 3 to 5 in winter. This city is home to one of the world's largest ethnic Indian populations outside of India. South, through KwaZulu-Natal and into the eastern Cape province, is the historical land of the Hossa people, of which Nelson Mandela is the best-known member. The majority of people in the Eastern Cape speak Hossa, a language which has two distinguishing features. Number one, the clicking sounds that are an integral part of the language. And number two, Hossa's apparent connection to the very mild oceanic climate of the region such as that of the city of Port Elizabeth. This city enjoys ideal summer averages, around 21 degrees Celsius, and fine, warm autumns, springs, and winters, with five to seven days of rainfall each month of the year. Competing with Port Elizabeth for the mildest climate conditions in South Africa is the oceanic city of East London. This Hossa, speaking majority city, has a slightly warmer winter than Port Elizabeth, giving it an edge for warm winter comfort. But it has about one-third more rain than Port Elizabeth, so, as in all things, there are trade-offs. Well, trade-offs in all things except fantastic climate facts, which, as you know, can only be found on Climate Time. So, join us for the World Wide Wander.